One of the criteria for pathological gambling includes using gambling to escape uh, dysphoric mood states or emotional discomfort of some kind. It can include, you know, gambling when you feel depressed or anxious or hopeless or shame. And for some, uh, they report gambling when they feel bored. Uh, boredom is kind of an interesting uh, experience. And a lot of patients who gamble will say, when I don't have anything to do, I don't have anything going on, I just kind of get restless and then I go and I, I gamble. And yet, uh, when we see that in treatment, uh, intuitively, I guess naturally, our instinct is to say, okay, so then in order to address this, what we've got to do is we've got to try to create a lifestyle for you that's incompatible with boredom and a lifestyle where you're active and you're busy and you're doing all these things so that you don't have time to gamble. Uh, ironically, this might in the short run alleviate uh, some of the proneness towards boredom but in the long run, we might actually be doing a disservice to patients because what we're doing then is making them more susceptible to future episodes of boredom where they're going to be in need of yet more external stimulation from their environment. Dr. John Eastwood from York University in Canada and some of his colleagues did a study a couple of years ago that was rather interesting and it has ramifications for maybe a different approach to working with boredom. In their uh, research what they discovered was boredom wasn't an experience that emerged because somehow our external environment fails to stimulate or engage us. Boredom rather was an experience that emerged in people's lives when they lack this emotional awareness or emotional attunement to what it is that actually is going on in the moment. So the ramifications of their study, interestingly, might suggest a paradoxical approach to working with boredom. When pathological gamblers say, I get bored, I gamble, what we might consider suggesting to them is they need to practice being bored. Uh, that always gets a bit of a reaction from a patient. What do you mean practice being bored? That doesn't exactly sound like a really fun homework assignment. But in fact, I will actually have patients increase their tolerance for boredom by practice being bored. I'll tell them to go home and spend 10 or 15 minutes a day and just stare at a white wall and don't think about anything else. Just let yourself be consumed by boredom and be curious about what happens in the moment and not necessarily feel like you have to do anything. And by increasing, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable experience by the way as you can imagine, but when they start to increase their tolerance for boredom, uh, when they start to have those moments where they don't have anything structured and they, they start to experience that little bit of the inkling of boredom, they think back to, oh, well, I'm just having this little experience with boredom and I'm used to that and I've practiced being bored and I can survive boredom. It's not going to be this uh, catastrophic experience in my life. And like many other experiences, it comes, it goes, it doesn't last indefinitely. And by leaning into that boredom, they actually increase their tolerance for it and are able to cope with boredom in a lot more efficient ways. Rather than historically what happens is they get into a tug of war with that boredom and it's a tug of war that they often lose. Like Dr. Eastwood and his colleagues discussed in their, their research, they said it's the insidious of boredom. It's kind of like thrashing around in quicksand. The more you thrash, the deeper you sink. And, and so this idea that you stop thrashing and you just be present, the fear is I'm going to sink. But in, a, in actual fact what happens is they find that they are more empowered to actually cope with boredom in their lives because it's something that isn't this experience that they dread per se. It may not be the most comfortable experience, but it's an experience that they've given themselves the opportunity to become familiar with and they realize it comes, it goes, just like everything else, and it doesn't have to be a trigger for gambling behaviors.